Close your eyes and focus on your breath. When the breath comes in, know that it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. Just keep at this, in and out, in and out. Try to keep your mind right here. This is going to require mindfulness, the ability to remember what you're doing, and alertness, watching what's actually happening. And then a quality called ardency. You really want to get the mind to settle down and be still. Because we're all, as we all know, the only true happiness there is in the world is the happiness of a still, peaceful mind. We can have the happiness of pleasures outside, but it doesn't really go deep down into the mind. For it to go deep down, you have to train the mind to find this happiness, that, or the potential for happiness that lies deep down there as well. So this is going to take some training and some, some ardency, the quality of really wanting to do it well. We have this opportunity to practice like this. We have this place to practice because of Lumbu Sawat. This is the 10th anniversary of his passing. That's why we're having all the ceremonies this morning. Passed away 10 years ago. 20 years ago, he founded this monastery with the intention that it be a place where anybody of any inclination, any background, any nationality who wanted to find peace of mind would have a good quiet corner to come and find some solitude so you can get to know your own mind, get to train your own mind. Because all too often when we live in the world, all we know is what things we pick up from other people, from the media, from our friends, from teachers, or just random acquaintances. All kinds of ideas come sloshing through our minds. And it's good to have a place where you can get out and be by yourself and sort these things out, to figure out, okay, which things do you really believe in, which do you not? Which are really good for you to believe, which are not? What can you do to train the mind so it doesn't cause itself harm? These things require solitude. And so this is why it's good we have this corner here. And as I said, John Swat's intention here was that it would be a place for everybody to come. Just like the breath, it's open for everybody. It's not a Buddhist breath or a Christian breath or a Jewish breath. It's just human breath coming in and going out. And the issues between the breath and the mind, the mind and its intentions, these are all universal issues. And so anyone who wants to train the mind has an opportunity to come here. And as you can see, it's not a place where you just hide out and run away from humanity. People come, from, Lots and lots of people come here from all over the world. They're all welcome. Because we're all coming here with this intention to find peace of mind, that we realize that the major happiness in life is going to be coming from training the mind. And the major suffering though, that we suffer from comes from our own lack of skill in dealing with our own minds. It takes a while to develop the skill that you need to find the true happiness that really does give satisfaction deep down inside. And then you realize that that happiness doesn't conflict with anyone else's happiness, anyone else's true happiness. And then when you develop these skills, then you can share what you know about the skills with others. This is why the practice of meditation is not a selfish practice. As you can see, we're all doing this together. But the individual problems, your problems, are your individual problems of how you create suffering for yourself and how you don't have to. And that's something we have to sort out on our own, which is why we need the solitude and the time to do this. But we owe this to the people who've gone before us who found that this was a really useful path and they want to make sure that there was an opportunity for the rest of us to follow this path as well. As John Sawat used to say, that when you're walking along the path, you see any grass or any weeds growing up the path, you want to make sure that you pull them out so they don't get in your way. When you come to the end of the path, and as far as your own personal needs are concerned, the grass can grow again. But then he said he'd look back and saw other people wanting to follow the path, and not only were more grass and weeds getting in their way, but uh, people were actually putting rocks in the way, other obstacles. And so he wanted to make sure that he could do what he could and to make sure that the path was open for those who came behind. So the fact that we have this place, we owe to his compassion. And the proper response to that compassion is gratitude, and the proper expression of gratitude is to practice, to try to find peace in your own mind so you can have something good to pass on to the next generation as well.